Gruesome Magazine. Hello once again, I am Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-host Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, Dave Jerry, and I will take a look at very spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing the timely Sundance psychological horror hit, <laughs> Knocking. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll you get really, into this. you really just had to. Like, I had to dig. I had to dig. All right. Mm-hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to give our first impressions. Then we're going to talk about the film. Then we're going to wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score one to five, and our favorite scene. But before we do all that, let me introduce the crew. Starting off with my co-host Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? Who's there? Knock knock. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> if you'd have told me you were going to do that, I could have come up with something a lot more. <laughs> Oh, no, that, that's, Orange? That's, well, it's Orange? no fun for me. <laughs> Aren't you glad you watched this movie? Ah, boom. Also joining this week is Crystal Cleveland. She's a living dead girl. Mm-hmm. How you doing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, don't know. see, 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 Doc's just trying to get under my skin because we talked about this movie. And so now I'm like, he, 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 he. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> All right. Um, Dracula is orange. I like that. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. That's, 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 I, wow. Um, well, we're, <laughs> before we get into the review, uh, if you <laughs> if you want to help us out, it's really easy and free to do. You hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, share with a friend. Hit the like button. And, uh, of course, we want to hear your comments in the comments down below. So give us your thoughts, as they would say. What are we talking about? We're talking about a film called Knocking. Uh, which was, like I said, a uh, Sundance psychological horror hit. Yes, it is coming out in theaters October 8th, and it's going to be on digital and on demand October 19th of 2021. It's a Swedish film, so Mm -hmm. I'm not going to embarrass myself. Let's move along. Um, What is our initial thoughts, Crystal? Um, You asked for it, so you're going first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... um, I I will say that this movie is very well made. Um, I I really enjoyed the cinematography. I I feel like the acting is fantastic from everyone in here, especially the lead. Basically, the lead carries this movie. Oh yeah, definitely. um, Completely, and she's fabulous. Like I have nothing bad to say about the way that the film is shot, or or her, or. I guess anything else other than the fact that I don't feel like this is a horror movie at all, or it's not a horror movie for me, or it's not a horror movie at all, except I could, I know, I know, I know Jeff can fight me on this, but there's, there's no blood, no gore, no death, no supernatural. No. Oh, I just spoiled it. Oh my God. Oops. It's okay. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm. I feel like a little bit of a jerk. Am I being a jerk? No. no, no I. No. I just. I. I. This movie started out so good. Okay. I mean, you have this woman lying on the beach and her girlfriend, and then she just disappears. And she. She. You see her in this mental ward, and it's like everything is set up for this amazing story and and where it's going to go, and then it just falls flat and it's it just winds up becoming a lifetime movie about gaslighting and that was very frustrating for me i i feel like wow it could have been crazy but but it really fell flat for me and so that's unfortunate i i I feel like it was set up to be something just because the knocking it's kind of it's creepy it's atmospheric it has it and then it just gets more and more boring as it goes along and and and, yeah and she's (laughs) and and i and i get it she does a great job of coming across as being very desperate but it's also you know you also have a very unreliable narrator i mean and and you know she she thinks she was talking to a doctor which apparently she wasn't so i it's just one of those movies that just does not hit any of the right buttons for me so yeah I feel like it'll be great for some, but not for me. Not for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, hey, that's what we're doing here. That's what we did. Jeff, 
you're up next, sir. What was your first impression of knocking? You know, when it starts off, it has possibilities. I mean, we're getting a psychological study. She's getting released from a mental hospital, apparently, and uh, is going out to live on her own. And you can tell it's a little, you know, it's not something she's used to. Uh, uh, so I don't, we don't know how long she's been in the mental hospital. There's also this issue of somebody's loss, but we never get any real, you know, I kind of assume somebody died, but I don't know. Was it a natural death? Was it an accident? Did it have, was it her fault? What, but she's definitely having trouble coping in some way. So, yeah. And then the, the fact that she's so unused to living in regular world, everyday life is what makes it kind of interesting from the beginning. Uh, there's some other things that, yeah, we get this knocking and she doesn't know where it's coming from and she keeps trying to figure it out. Uh, and there's also some crying and help me kind of things going on. And um, so, yeah. And then that happens for like an hour and a half, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I was actually kind of, well, actually 78 minutes. So I, I was kind of <laughs> irritated with the ending. Um, yeah. It just didn't. So I, I, to me, it had a lot, it had a lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. But, um, and again, because she's insane and just got out of the mental hospital, we have this whole possibility of an unreliable narrator. So I don't even know what the ending was, really. Mm, nice. Well, I'm I'm just going to say I absolutely love this movie. No, I'm kidding. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? No, I, I did enjoy this movie more than the two of you did. But only barely more. I, I think what saves the movie and makes it watchable is the lead actress, Cecilia Malaco. Mm -hmm. Malaco? Yes. I'm mispronouncing every name. But she, it basically, she's in almost every frame, right? Uh, literally almost every frame. And mm -hmm. it is, she conveys this woman who is fragile and on the verge of just you know, total collapse mentally. And, you know, you quickly get the impression that perhaps she shouldn't have been released, right? Yeah. Um, and she's unstable. And, and, you know, even to the point where, you know, is is she even a reliable narrator? You know, what what at what point are, you know, we experiencing what she's experiencing instead of experiencing the story, right? So... I, in many ways, I enjoyed that. I, I didn't get bored. I didn't feel like I was bored for 78 hours. 78 hours. That would have bored me. 78 <laughs> minutes. Uh, but at the same time, it really doesn't, it doesn't really cover a whole lot of ground. We basically just watch the, this woman unravel. Um, and I think the more you, as an audience member, relate to whatever she's experiencing, if you if you can relate to that, I think the more you're going to like this. I think the idea of, you know, people not believing that you're hearing something, there, there's a lot of things in here that, um, you, that you can cling on to, especially not being heard, you know, and, and feeling there's something there and, and, you know, the gaslighting aspect of it um, to a certain degree. Um, and there's certainly, you know, is she, you know, what is she imagining? What is really there? And, and, and she's, she's in a position where most people aren't going to take her side from the onset because of, you know, she's literally just getting out of a mental hospital. So she's, that's a stigma, right? That's baggage that she's carrying along with this. So jumping straight into this particular series of events, you know, just is the wrong environment for her to be in if she's like you at the end of the movie is she actually you know who what is she in um i i there are there are some scenes in here that i really really enjoy there's like three or four really well shot scenes i mean the film is the shot well and the acting is really well it's just that the story itself i maybe it just doesn't translate you know, it's a Swedish film. Maybe it just doesn't translate to U.S. audiences. I'm I'm reaching. I don't know. 
it just it needs a little bit more um I don't want elaboration is the word that comes to mind, but I don't know if that's quite the right word. You just need some more oomph to it. It needs something. And, you know, like you were suggesting, Crystal, if it got crazier or wackier, it'd be a little more interesting. And, and you're absolutely right. If it had something that you know blew your mind, then it would be kind of like really awesome. But at the same time, I didn't I didn't necessarily hate it, but I didn't really like it either. So I don't watch movies to waste my time and watch stuff that's particularly boring and something that doesn't have a payoff. And that's how I felt about this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I have stuff to do in my daily life. I don't need to waste my time watching stuff that's just drab. And that's what this is. It has a message. It is gaslighting. This woman is being gaslighted everywhere. No one believes her. And apparently at the end, you know, she's telling the truth. That's what I gathered from it. So I'm like, okay, I get the message, but it, and I, and I get it. It happens all the time. And, but it just did still didn't do anything. If I wanted to watch a lifetime movie about gaslighting, that's what I would do, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Well, the all. thing I like, I think like, I think what just, makes it <sighs> a little bit different than what you're describing is just the deterioration of her mental facilities right it's just that and i think but i i just don't know if like like we've mentioned we don't have enough background about the events that led to it so yeah we, we don't, don't know why she was in the hospital like is she yeah. if she is she paranoid schizophrenic he said are you taking your pills i if she's paranoid schizophrenic it's highly likely that she is hallucinating all of this, you know, because right. they have hallucinations. So we don't know why she was in the hospital in the first place. We can assume it was as of or relating to that incident on the beach, but we don't really know we that. We don't for really sure. know what the incident is. We just know yeah. something happened. But and what woman at her age doesn't know how to function in daily life as well? Did she depend so much on her partner to do that? I mean, there's lots of questions here. And I didn't really care about the answers. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Well, I get it. We, we, go ahead. No, I was going to say the thing that, that I thought of while you were talking before, Doc, was that she does, it is well acted. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned Cecilia Malaco is, uh, because she's, people are trying to beat her down from every direction. Yeah. And she, she'll kind of falter. You see her kind of falter and then sort of buck up and reassert herself that, no, this is happening and uh just showing a lot of frustration so that that sequence is good but it's it's i, I don't know i can't well acted well shot um some good scenes in terms of her character but but in the end it feels unsatisfying for me mm -hmm. Yeah, I th I th I think you nailed it there. It, yeah. it just doesn't have. That's it. It, it you know, there's not enough to invest yourself fully into the character, and then in return, you're not satisfied with the outcome. I mean, it does have a solid outcome, or at least in the respect that for herself, maybe not for the story itself, but you know, people, whatever is happening, you know, we learn is spoilers true. Um, even though we're never, we never see that either, which is really fascinating. Which is, is she imagining right? that in her head that that's what's happening as well? You see that there's no guarantee that that's actually real because, well, for one, she would never hear that where she was at. Okay, so she couldn't have heard those conversations, but in her, that's what was playing. Well, you you know what was happening, so it's mm -hmm. like, is that actually happening or is that what she's imagining is happening as her justification? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Maybe she and, really isn't being gaslit. Maybe, maybe she really maybe, is just maybe, paranoid maybe. schizophrenic. Yeah. And and there are audiences out there that love, you know, the is it ambiguity of it all. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, yeah. right. Vague, exactly. Is, you know, that, you know, there's so much to interpret, so much that you can bring into the story. Uh, you can see it the way that satisfy you. But as a, as the the kind of audience that the three of us are, even though we have different 
likes and and um, you know types of horror films we like. But as a horror film fan, we want that yeah. that horror meat in there. We want something in there that has um, a little bit more shock. Anything, more God, like it. Like I really did like it when it started out, and I was like, oh, this could be interesting. This could go. Because it does have good sound design with the knocking. I mean, it, it, uh, it just felt like it went in circles. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, it, it was a little repetitive yeah. in that matter. I mean, each each repetition was a little, you know, another step More up. More intense, but, but still. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't really, uh, until the final scene when she actually goes to the door, right? It, it really didn't, um, it just didn't really bring anything new in other than, you know, maybe a small variation or, you know, uh, increase of what she was experiencing. So, yeah. So it felt rep repetitious for a lot of us because of that. Yeah. I will say that when it didn't, that one scene I just mentioned, it did feel rather intense. And it was, it was, you know, for that short period that we had that scene. Like, I, I, I just, she I, had the I, knife and she's mm -hmm. swinging it around. Like, what are these three guys going to do? And she's got the knife and she's sticking it through the door. <laughs> You know, I will say uh, part of it is that the entire movie, she is always at odds that she can't even possibly beat. She's all, she's never going to win. And I think part of what makes a successful movie for me and, and for lots of people is that you want to see some light at the end of that tunnel, even if you don't let them win. But just the idea that they could it's just she's just constantly being beat down i guess there was no there there it, it, it there just wasn't that that meat that we needed that that well, I, light that meat that you know yeah go ahead Jeff. to mention a specific scene yeah when she goes produce shopping oh yeah i mean it was the whole point of that that she wasn't used to living on her own i, I don't know she it was, was just she odd. was buying weight way more fruit that she could possibly consume and there was a lot of heat and they didn't have air conditioning apparently so the guy's trying to tell her this this is going to spoil mm -hmm. yeah because he's like are you having a party no it's all for me uh well you know yeah i don't know and that's what i'm saying like she she seems like she could be paranoid schizophrenic and had a lover that probably helped take care of her and now and if she's not taking her meds let me tell you it's it's a it, i I've, I've seen that and it, not, she, could, she might not have died she just might have abandoned her <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, oh. we don't know. <gasps> but you you saw they had like screams there were screams in the background of that i think was there? Uh, that was yeah. an odd scene so I really, guess, but we still have no idea what happened I, I feel like it was to see something as it. Yeah, when they did the drone <laughs> shot with it coming yeah. out, I did too. I was like, okay. I was like, is it a shark attack? I was like, it would have been awesome if we just saw blood in the water. I was like, that would have been something, you know. I just, I was, I was, I was like, oh, it's gonna blood. be blood. It's gonna be blood in the water, isn't it? No, no, nope. no. Nope. And I get it. I think people like to make these artistic movies where they're like, oh, let's not, let's not, let's let the audience decide. I feel like that's weak and it's a cop out and it's unfortunate. I, I think the audience needs more. And I think the audience deserves more. And as a viewer, I deserve more. So I have to decide whether this movie makes me angry enough to rip it to shreds because of that or not. Yep, that's exactly what we're heading out to. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give it our final thoughts, our <laughs> score. Oh, one one to, five. to five. And our favorite scene. And let's and find out about all the shredding. All right, Crystal, <laughs> uh, give it to us. Let's have it. Okay. I am going to, obviously I think this movie is probably going to be great for those people who, you know, like this sort of stuff, you know, it's subtle. It's like, it's not gonna, it's not going to be too much for anyone. I mean, I, I, kids could watch this. It's, it, it's fine. Um, they won't I, want to. Though. Yeah, I know they won't, but you know, you could. Uh, I'm going to give it a two and a half. Oh, wow. Okay. Because it is shot well. It's made well. The acting is, I really, I, I, I did find the, the lead captivating. She's, she's got this like high strung sort of jittery thing going on. And it's, you really want to see, you know, what's going to happen with her. Um, 
But yeah, I will. I would never watch it again. And it actually just really turned me off. But yeah, okay. And I am going to say my favorite scene. Okay. I really did like this. My favorite scene was when she was wearing the camera that was facing her and yes, she was confronting yeah. the neighbors and she was going, you know, it's kind of shaky and it's like down here, like, well, she's like, Ooh, you know, I, I, I really felt the tension there and see like so much potential. I just, I just wish it had given us more. Yeah. And that shot can be used incorrectly very easily or overused. And I thought they used that technique. It's when great. appropriate and, mm -hmm. and to great effect. Yeah, you, you mm -hmm. took my favorite scene. Uh, oh, Jeff I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> more. I got more. Jeff Moore, you're up next. Uh, what is your final thoughts? Your score and favorite scene? So I think, again, there are movies that have this ambiguity in them, to steal Doc's word, uh, of are they crazy or are they not, right? Is it is it insanity? Is it hallucination? Is this really happening or... Uh, is it an unreliable narrator or is it real? And, but this one is even, I don't know why this one didn't hit me that way. So it didn't, didn't sit well, uh, but some people might like it. If you like that kind of stuff, great. Um, so I'm giving this a two. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I could have. Uh, my favorite scene, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, when she, uh, has, that up. what's that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> you know how to follow that up. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, uh -huh, I could have, but you know, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I, I decided not to say what I was thinking. I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. Uh, Sorry, we derailed you. Good going. <laughs> so, so favorite scene, I liked. It appealed to my uh, my my uh, mathematic brain, I guess. The when she keyed in on the Morse code oh, possibilities, yeah. and then where she went with that, I, yeah, stuff yep. all over the wall, and then, and then we see that leads me to think paranoid schizophrenic. All that stuff leads me to believe that she's paranoid, and oh my gosh. That just blows this movie out of the water. I mean, as far as like, it still needs more to make sense to me. I think it, uh, yeah. Just That's um, one little more, well, just a couple more, right? Mm -hmm. so, all right. All right. Uh, so, oh, hey, hey. Person, how you doing? All right. I, um, <laughs> I, this wasn't a, I was looking forward to this because I wanted to know, you know, the trailers have the knocking thing and you could, you could tell that something was going to happen and, and, the sound design and the acting looked great. Um, so I was looking forward to it. Um, I didn't really enjoy this film. It, it's like we've been talking about, you know, it, it kind of meanders around in the second act. The second act kind of doesn't really get to where it wants to go. The, the third act, though, however, once, once she, well, and leading up to the third act, once she goes up to the third floor and confronts them, the, the film gets far more interesting. And I was intrigued at first. Because I was like, okay, this character's interesting. I want to know what's going on. And then it, it lost my interest. And I, I'm not sure if it's just the technique they use to tell the story, you know, the, the, the lack of information, or whether it just didn't translate. Um, uh, something, something didn't work. But it, there's enough here to recognize uh, you know, the acting, the, the cinematography is really nice. The, some of the shots are from the director are really, really sweet. Uh, but as more than anything is the acting, right? Um, because this woman, you, there's no doubt this character is falling apart. She totally portrays, um, you know, this, this the mental anguish of what this character is experiencing and, and the lack of footing that she's having, you know, with what's what's going on around her, you know the the struggle that she's having between wanting to be heard and feeling entirely isolated and alone. So, it so there is some aspects of it that I want to recognize and want to enjoy and want to champion, but in the end, the story doesn't support it. Um, so, I have a hard time. This is one of those films where I hate giving it a bad score. I want to. I want to say it's better than it is, and I'm going two and a quarter. If, ironically, Crystal, you like it with the best score. Well, I put two and a half at a movie that's that's better than average, and I think the way the film is made in general is better than average when we're talking about. I I would agree with that. I would, but yeah. I just don't mm -hmm. think that 
there it just doesn't oh i'm with you like, oh i oh so, you know me i wanted to be like so one took, took a little off of it um because uh, i was wanting to give it a, you know higher but anyway Enough about that. You guys get the point. <laughs> My favorite scene was, I, I especially love the scenes when they have the camera, let, like you said, it's just like part of her. So when she moves, you know, she, it, she's not moving, but everything else is moving around her. And that really conveyed the panic and the, um, you know, the, the mental state and the desperation that she's having. In my second my since you took that my scene that i liked is almost the opposite of that but has the same um feel in a technical sort of way and that's when she's lying at the bed on her on the bed at the end and she's basically just comatose i mean even though she's not out you know out of it she's just basically done and the fire begins on the roof and it's on the roof right and it's just it was such a a beautiful shot mm -hmm. and and you were like okay because at this point we're like what the hell is going on is this all in her dream is this something is this going back to the beginning is this what happened and we don't know you know what's and then the you know the fire fireman shows up and it goes off um and i still enjoyed it from there on i actually liked the ending and you know what what, what she all heard and, and validating or you know either internally or in reality what was happening but that shot with her on the bed and the mm -hmm. fire above her um, just was was so captivating. And and the look on her face and the body language or lack of body language that she had, you know, just was she was so accepting in that fate, right? She was like still laying there going, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, this is it. I, I I'm not getting out of this one. This is the end yeah. of it." You know? yeah. And what? And so that's. You know, are you know are they going through the grief here? Is that the last thing of grief? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, something didn't translate for me, but I love the, the beauty of that shot. So. I did too. Fire yeah. is always pretty. It, well, yeah, when yeah. done well. <laughs> what were we about to say, Jeff? Nothing. He's, gonna say. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, no, no. I'm it would have been. Good. It would have been spoilery. So, oh, yeah. well, so DM for special thoughts. I'll ask. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our review of Knocking, and it's heading uh, to theaters on the first uh, and then later in the month, VOD and digital. So check it out and let us know down below what you think. Tell us what we're missing, please. There's something. Um, let us know what it is. Or if we're totally not missing it, validate us. I think this is going to be polarizing, actually. Yeah, I think this be. is kind because of, yeah. I could see people liking it and drawing whatever conclusions, you know. Mm -hmm. But well, it, it, like I said, I think if you the more you relate to the character, the more this movie's going to mean to you. You know, more it's going to mean to you. Yeah, agreed. And I didn't. But so. I, well, I, and I, yeah, I think that the horror is in the character's situation. Yeah. Her mental, yeah, that she's trapped that she in this whatever whatever the deal is that's going on with her. So, yeah. I... <laughs> all right, well, yeah. let's let's get out of here. Crystal <laughs> and Jeff, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Ooh. thank you. And let's say good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>